Well, that's a low effort login screen. Hey guys, Nick here and this is my Linux experiment and in today's video I'd like to take a tour of Ubuntu 18.04 which is the new LTS version which just released. Why Ubuntu? Because it's gonna be the base for elementary OS Juno, so let's see what we can expect. A new minimal install option. It allows you to install without many of the default apps and should save more disk space. All you get is the OS, a web browser, which is Firefox, a file manager and the basic utilities. Uh, you can say goodbye to LibreOffice, to Thunderbird and other GNOME games. Uh, you will only get the minimal uh, defaults. Uh, this should not make its way to Juno since they plan on using their custom new installer which they developed for System76 instead of using the new default uh, Ubuntu uh, installer. No more swap partition. I don't know if this one will make its way to elementary OS since it also depends on the installer, but basically, all the Ubuntu installs created a swap partition, a specific partition on your disk for storing app data when the RAM is full. So now a simple swap file should be enough, and uh, well, I don't know if this will be picked up by elementary OS, but I sure hope it will. No more 32-bit ISO. Ubuntu 18.04 dropped the 32-bit ISO, uh, I think Ubuntu 17.10 already did that as well, uh, which means that you will need to turn to another flavor of Ubuntu to use on older systems. Uh, technically, any system released in the last 5 or 6 years, uh, maybe even more, should be 64-bit, so I don't think this is gonna impact too many people, but 32-bit systems should use lightweight distros anyways, uh, since Ubuntu is not bloated, but it's not a lightweight distro anyways. Uh, so Ubuntu might not have been your first choice for those older computers. Uh, I probably, I think maybe elementary OS will ditch the 32-bit ISO as well. Uh, I wouldn't really be surprised. GNOME Shell. Yep, Unity is out. Uh, you already had a warning in Ubuntu 17.10. Uh, it had already received the boot in favor of GNOME Shell, and well, it still is. Uh, Unity is still out in this LTS release. Uh, the GNOME Shell integration that they have made works almost the same with a dock on the left, a top bar, and only the global menu and the HUD have been removed. It shouldn't really confuse anyone uh, that was used to Unity. Uh, and uh, well, this also makes a few changes, such as the GNOME settings, which is used instead of the Unity Control Center. Uh, don't think that's too much of a big deal. If you loved Unity, some guys have picked up the project, uh, so you can check out uh, this as well. GNOME 3.28 with GNOME Shell comes a new version of GNOME. This version is full of nice improvements, such as Thunderbolt 3 support, a nightlight mode to reduce blue light emissions after certain hours and help you sleep better, or including media controls in the message tray uh, for easier access to your music. Uh, some of those changes will also be uh, integrated in elementary as Juno, since uh, it uses uh, some GDK3 apps. Uh, for example, nightlight uh, will be integrated. A first run wizard. To explain the changes to Ubuntu 18.04, uh, it includes a small utility that runs at the first startup and presents you with a few screens. Uh, first of all, a one-slide tutorial explaining where is what, and then an option to enable live patch, which allows you to install updates without rebooting, and ask also for a Ubuntu account, and the controversial data collection feature, and then an overview of a few installable apps. Uh, speaking of the data collection feature, I don't think it's that much of a big deal. Uh, it's opt-in by default, but you can unselect it. And frankly, when you look at what it collects, you can generate a uh, sample log and see what it collects. And it's really only system-based data. It is not associated with any information uh, uh, linked to you or your person. No, uh, it's all anonymized. They won't get your uh, email address, your phone, your address. They don't know any of this shit, and personally, I don't think they care. So, I'm not against that. I think it's uh, pretty useful for them to know on which system their distro is run, and I personally wouldn't mind elementary OS to ask for this kind of data collection, just to check if uh, anything is running smoothly and on which systems their OS is run the most. Emojis. Okay, right. You can press Ctrl plus dot to access these emojis. It's cool, I guess. These might be included in elementary US Juno, I don't know, I don't care about emojis. Uh, for those that do, know that these are made available through a special font, I think made by Google. 
whatever. Some app updates. Now that's more interesting. All default apps have received a bump in their version number, such as Firefox 59, LibreOffice 6, or Thunderbird 52. Ubuntu also adds a default to-do list app called ToDo. These updated versions will of course be available on elementary OS 5.0 since they share the same repositories at Ubuntu 18.04. So not only the default apps have been updated, but all app versions in the repositories should also have been bumped up. So that means more up-to-date apps in Juno as well. Snaps. Some software are also available as snaps by default. Why? No one knows, but the calculator, for example, is installed via a snap instead of from the repositories. This makes no sense, that's idiotic. These snaps won't use third-party themes, since snaps are shitty like that, and now you have two entries of some apps in the software store, such as Firefox. So now everybody's confused and don't know where their software is coming for or why it doesn't look like other apps. I don't like snaps, I don't like flat packs, except maybe for proprietary software or third-party apps which will not want to maintain a special repository or use really old versions of libraries, of shared libraries. Uh, for the rest of apps, they're just a security liability, they use too much space, they ignore theming, they ignore shared libraries, which are one of the core concepts of Linux. I don't like them. I'll talk about them in a later video. I just don't understand why they would make some default GNOME apps installed via snaps. I think that's just stupid. Uh, snaps are not installed by default on elementary OS and I don't think they will be on Juno, thank the almighty gods of open source. The Linux kernel. Of course, the Linux kernel has also been updated. Version 4.15 is included by default, which brings a host of drivers and hardware support, but also improved power management for systems using SATA Link and secure memory encryption support on AMD hardware. So as, uh, as all Linux kernel updates, you can expect more hardware to work out of the box and more battery life on your laptops. Uh, this kernel should also make it to Juno, uh, there is no reason why it wouldn't. X.org Instead of Wayland, which was made default on Ubuntu 17.10, Ubuntu 18.04 uses X.org again. It's more robust, even though it's older technology, and that's what you want for an LTS release. Uh, I don't think uh, Juno will use Wayland, I think it's gonna stick to X.org, uh, and I hope it will, because Wayland is still not ready. So there you go guys, Ubuntu 18.04 seems to be a good release, if uh, not that different from its predecessor 17.10. Uh, compared to Ubuntu 16.04 though, uh, which is the base for the current uh, elementary OS version, it's a big improvement and I'm looking forward to see what Juno will look like with the nice solid foundation to build upon. I expect Juno to release in a few months now, I'd wager on the end of June. And uh, well, as always, I've been Nick, this has been my Linux experiment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!